So it's 2023, and Asus and Acer decided that it's a good time to introduce 3D compatible laptops. 3D is not a great term, but this thing is different. What we call a switchable lenticular. And a switchable lenticular means that these are two glass plates with a lenticular structure in between, LC material, and that optical structure deviates the light. So you saw a 3D image, and that means 3D you can only see if your left eye sees a different perspective than your right eye. And what we do with this optical structure is to send a different image to your left eye and to your right eye, and that's how you perceive 3D. Well, this switchable cell is then being optically bonded on top of an LCD, and this stack is actually put in to such a laptop. Besides the optical layer, we also add the camera, and by adding the camera, we actually track your eyes. And by tracking your eyes, we know exactly where your left eye and right eye is, and that's why you get that crisp image. But it also gives us the opportunity to change the perspective. So we don't only give you a 3D perspective, but we also give you the perspective to look around an object, like in real life. And that's being done in mass manufacturing. And what you see in the ASUS is actually that we use an OLED screen, and why is that, uh, is that special? Well, OLED has, of course, big advantages, but also the OLED structure is a bit more difficult to make such optical structure, and that's what we actually have been achieved. Uh, so ASUS is the pro art that they are bringing to market. I think they will ship around Q3 uh, this year. And then next to it, you have an Acer device, which is a Concept D, and they're already shipping that in the market. Uh, what you see with ASUS and Acer, they focus initially on creators, designers, uh, engineers, typically people or users that already work in a 3D environment where they can actually leverage on our display technology to see really that depth perspective or look around an object, which you normally cannot do in a 2D display. Uh, secondly, gaming. We believe gaming is a very big market. And if you add a 3D perspective, you have a much more immersive gaming experience. So a lot of people are talking about VR and XR, but you always have to wear these wearables on your hat. And if you ask a consumer, or if I would ask you, would you put something on your hat to have an immersive experience? You'd rather not. And that's actually what we offer. Eh? What you see is that you sit in front and you have immediately that immersive experience. And that is something quite unique. And that's what consumers really like. The difference also in the past when you had the TVs with the 3D glasses, Content was a big issue. You only had a few 3D movies. It was uh, focused on the TV market. And we predominantly focus on the IT market, like uh, desktop monitors or laptops, where you have much more content available, where there's much more use cases, and there's also much more uh, willingness to accept such technology. How about the content creation? Uh, does it have to be uh, prepared for this certain technology? No, so the good thing is that we can actually leverage on most of the content that's already available. So movies, okay, you have to have a 3D movie, but like every 3D model or every game already has that 3D information. And that we can actually extract quite easily, and that's why there's hugely amount of content available. But you still have to work with developers to kind of adjust the game, or do you just open a game on a laptop and, it's already has, and it already has the 3D enhancement or...? Yeah, it's both. So in some cases, we can actually just run the game and it works. So we work on the standardization called OpenXR, and then you can actually plug and play. But in some times, the games which are a bit older, then you have to adopt it a bit. Okay, so what's next? Video conferencing. You can think about video conferencing. So regretfully, tomorrow we have the suite set up where you can actually see each other both when you do a video conferencing. Um, we see more interaction, so you can actually use a hand and interact with the model. So that's what we think is next. What will be the percentage of uh, market? Like how many laptops will uh, introduce uh, this 3D perspective in the future, let's say in a year or two? Uh, I think we believe that looking at our pipeline, about four or five of the biggest eight OEMs in the market will introduce products with our technology. That's a lot. That is a lot. The future is here. Thank you. Thank you.